Why self-driving cars will be everywhere quicker than most expect. I've had a theory about self-driving technology ever since I experienced Tesla's self-driving software suite, FSD, especially starting with their version 11 release. Let me walk you through how I think about this by first giving some context. Tesla FSD version 11 was the first version from Tesla where I had first-hand experience that the company was on track to solve for self-driving technology. It solidly moved from if to when, mainly for two reasons. It became obvious, to me at least, that the car was able to see everything that was relevant that was happening on the road, which means it is not a hardware problem, but a software problem. The same exact places where the car previously failed massively, all of a sudden were handled flawlessly. And second, I noticed that being a passenger while the system was on is a materially different experience than being behind the wheel of a self-driving car, which made me realize that once you reach a certain threshold, solving self-driving for a passenger is materially different than solving for a driver. A lot of the doubt that has traditionally arised from Tesla's approach is mainly due to their choice in hardware. The thought process is that Tesla's cars will be able to drive themselves with eight cameras and a computer, essentially using the same inputs that humans used to drive. Two eyes, a neck, and body that allows us to move our cameras from side to side and backwards, and a brain that processes the data we see, which then tells our arms and legs what to do in response to what we see. Tesla thinks it can get there by putting cameras around the car that simulates our ability to look around, an advanced computer in the car to process the information, and an AI brain at Tesla's mothership that makes sense of the inputs and subsequently generates the outputs. For example, like pressing the accelerator or the brake pedal, steering inputs, etc. This AI brain was largely human code with version 11 and previous versions, meaning that humans would need to figure out all the quote-unquote code that will be needed for the car to drive itself everywhere. Starting with version 12, Tesla has offloaded that work to a neural net. Think of it as a chat GPT, but for driving. The additional bonus here is that Tesla cars require no mapping to understand the roads. They simply look at it and navigate as a regular car would by taking cues from the road and by using navigation maps. Players like Waymo and others are solving for this equation very differently. They are going all out on sensors like LiDAR, radar, cameras, ultrasonics, etc., and are generating high definition maps of the cities that they operate in. This has allowed players to start offering self-driving taxi drives, which is amazing in its own right and should not be underestimated at all, but at the cost of scale. It is significantly harder and more expensive to scale a technology that requires heavy upfront investments in both equipment and mapping. Waymo's self-driving cars cost somewhere around $250,000. On the flip side, Tesla's Model 3, which the company thinks has enough hardware to solve for self-driving cars, starts at $39,000. That's more than a six-time cost difference. Essentially, Tesla is betting that eight cameras and a computer will be enough hardware to drive, but it requires way more time and effort to get it to do what Waymo does today because of that hardware and mapping limitation. Waymo has way more hardware and resources to understand the world, but it's way tougher to scale the product when you've spent six times more on equipment and the need to map every road that exists in the world. In addition, the economics of a taxi that costs $250,000 become harder to justify than one that costs $40,000 and could theoretically drive on every road versus the roads that Waymo has mapped, which up to this point is only a handful of cities in the United States. And lastly, if the car can drive itself, but it can't make enough money to pay for itself, the technology fails regardless of how good it is. This is Waymo's core struggle. If Tesla achieves the same level of driving capability as a Waymo car, then in theory, Tesla can upload the software to its 5 million car fleet, allowing Tesla to have a Waymo on every road that allows it, with one-sixth the cost of Waymo from an equipment standpoint, and zero cost or effort as it pertains to mapping the roads. However, the biggest hurdles Tesla has faced with FSD, especially as it pertains to adoption, are the following. The car can oftentimes behave in an inhuman way, it takes a bit too long to cross an intersection, turns feel unnatural, decision making around traffic is oftentimes confusing, lane selection is incorrect, etc. Also, the car will respond in a materially different way in some perceived safety critical situations. In general, people that pay attention will take extra precautions when they face a weird situation on the road that might put their safety at risk. A Tesla on FSD can handle these very differently than a human, even though the outcome may be the same. Avoid a crash as an example. 
The challenge is the person can sometimes have little confidence that the car will actually do the thing it's supposed to do to avoid that crash. This dramatically raises anxiety and stress, which leads to people feeling like they can't trust the software, understandably so. And lastly, the current upfront price of the software, which is $12,000, is a steep price to pay when the above are present. A person can often find themselves in this situation. Why should I pay that much when I can drive the car better than it can? And there lies the challenge. I think this is largely a psychological exercise. What we may deem as better within the context of getting from point A to point B is irrelevant to a computer system. A self-driving computer's ultimate goal is to get you from point A to point B safely. However, this statement doesn't mean that comfort in getting from point A to point B is not a big deal. On the contrary, it is the biggest deal and the largest variable for the adoption of self-driving cars. But this equation changes as you move from a driver to a passenger in a self-driving car. And this is where Tesla's version 12 update comes in, which the company thinks will achieve way more levels of comfort and confidence with a fraction of the cost and the ability to handle all roads without mapping data. Now, for this to be the case, version 12 has to achieve the following. First of all, it needs to be vastly safer than a human to remove any doubt that the system is safe, something like 10 times to 100 times safer than a human. It also needs to give confidence to the driver and passengers that the system A, perceives any and all potential dangers on the road, and B, acts in a way that reassures the people in the car that the car has quote-unquote got it. Tesla needs to prove that this is not a hardware limitation, but it's limited by the car making a decision on what it sees. Another thing version 12 has to achieve is choosing a route that is acceptable to the people in the car. In other words, get people to their location by the time you are estimating. And lastly, for wide-scale robotaxi technology, in other words, a fleet of driverless cars, Tesla needs to operate these at a much lower cost than its competition, like Uber. Without needing a driver, this should be very easily done. Now, why do I think this technology will be here much sooner than people expect? Two reasons. Computers and AI are vastly better than humans at solving narrow problems, especially if they're based in mathematics and physics, and the experience of being a passenger in a transportation system is vastly different than being in control. Let's start with the AI piece by looking at the progress we've made with computing for the better part of three decades and the recent advancements in AI. Computing has made non-creative tasks incredibly easy to solve. Imagine a medium to large corporation existing without Excel in this day and age. On the other hand, AI and advanced algorithms are making esoteric problems, for example, problems that are very difficult to solve, solvable at a rate that we previously thought impossible. It started with chess computers beating the best chess players in the world. Now we have AIs like ChatGPT, Midjourney, and Eleven Labs capable of generating solutions for problems we thought computers would never be able to solve. Here's an example. Hey, ChatGPT, can you write me a Python code for whatever? Oh, and by the way, can you give me a thousand word summary of how Genghis Khan conquered the world? You can ask the same tool these questions and it'll generate a response with high levels of accuracy. This was impossible not even a year ago. In addition, as a quick anecdote, I've been using Eleven Labs to generate an AI model of my voice and using it on my content. Upon asking my audience if the voice I use for the video is real or AI, the audience consistently gets them confused for each other. We have reached a point that with enough training data, an AI can simulate my voice with its quirks and everything to a point where it's indistinguishable from my real voice. I let you decide which one is in this video. And it's this data piece that Tesla has a massive advantage over everyone else. The video data that Tesla has been able to gather from its fleet of 5.5 million cars and growing is what will allow it to solve for self-driving in the same way ChatGPT solved for general use AI, Midjourney solved for image creation, and Eleven Labs solved for voice creation. It's a matter of having the right hardware to ingest the data, collecting the data, having the hardware to process it, and having an economic model where it makes sense to put the data to work. If we take Elon Musk's initial version 12 ride from 2023 where he live streamed it to his ex audience, and if we take the initial feedback from users that have been using version 12 in the wild, the system is already driving better in many instances with about one year of development and the lowest amount of training data and training hardware it will have at its disposal than the previous six years of development under version 11 and older versions. In this respect, it appears that Tesla has put in place the necessary variables to finalize the system, which in my estimation will be proved out as we get further into 2024. Time will tell if this is correct. 
Now, the second piece of this whole thing that I think many are overlooking is the experience of being a passenger versus a driver in a self-driving vehicle is dramatically different. If we use Waymo as an example, Waymo requires zero inputs from the passengers, even though there is a steering wheel and pedal in the car. In this sense, someone that gets in a Waymo, they have zero need to A, pay attention to their surroundings, or B, be prepared to take over at any point. By default, knowing that this is the case, a person in a Waymo rides in it in the same mode they would as if they're riding a bus, plane, or an Uber. In a large percentage of cases, that person will be on their phone, laptop, sleeping, listening to music, or chatting with someone else in the car. What is happening with the car and the outside of the car becomes secondary, if not completely irrelevant. On the flip side, with Tesla's full self-driving software, there always needs to be an attentive driver ready to take over at any time. This means that by default, the same person that would traditionally be a passenger in a Waymo is a driver in the Tesla in a scenario where the Tesla is driving itself. And because of this, the level that Tesla has to reach in order to be quote unquote acceptable as a self-driving system is significantly more stringent than a system that is already self-driving. I'll use myself as an example to prove this point. When I'm sitting behind a Tesla while self-driving is on, I feel responsible for the actions and maneuvers that the car is doing at any given time. I am constantly judging the performance of the car as if I'm the one who's driving it. I'm constantly thinking to myself that maybe I would have taken a different angle on a turn. Maybe I would have cleared the intersection a little bit more aggressively. Maybe I would have moved to that lane a little bit sooner. Or maybe I wouldn't have been so hesitant exiting an intersection. The list goes on. I've made countless drives where the car has taken me from point A to point B with no interactions from me with the car where I would have made different decisions in getting us there. But the car still got us there with the version 11 software. This is before the new version that Tesla is releasing with version 12. The experience is very similar to riding in a car where the driver and passenger both have steering wheels and pedals and you trust the other person to make the right decisions, but you have the power to take over at any time. In the case of Tesla's FSD system, the system will default to your inputs 100% of the time if you intervene. I am terrified to think what it would be like if it was with another person. And it is this equation that makes a Tesla piece so intriguing. If Tesla is able to achieve way more level of driving comfort and input with version 12, by default, the system is already better than a Waymo because it has cleared a higher bar of acceptability. It has reached way more level of comfort as a driver, not a passenger. As a passenger by default, you are less likely to be in a mindset to judge every decision of the car. And if this becomes true, Tesla will be able to beam Waymo level performance and comfort to millions of cars on the road today, which will put it at an insurmountable advantage versus its competition due to its decision to go with a significantly lower cost high scale option. If we look back in history, some of the most memorable and life altering technological breakthroughs kind of came out of nowhere, at least in the public's eyes. A computer beating a chess grandmaster at chess and a world class player at Go proving that high power computers can solve even the most difficult human problems in addition to the internet, e-commerce and the subsequent birth of the largest companies in the world that are entirely enabled because of the existence of such technology. You also have things like AIs based on large language model technology like ChatGPT and AI tools like Midjourney and Eleven Labs, which make creative work that was initially thought as entirely human into something that can be infinitely iterated on and altered. And now with the advent of self-driving technology, my gut tells me that we're approaching the same level of sudden breakthrough. You have to give props to companies like Waymo though which have figured out how to get a car to drive itself in certain locations without the luxury of having AIs at its disposal. A group of folks were able to get together, identify the correct marriage of hardware and software, put in a ton of elbow grease and make an insanely impressive system that will get people from point A to point B safely and comfortably. The unfortunate piece here is that because of its complexity for a company like Waymo to be successful long term, it needs to scale to a point where it can operate anywhere where there is a road. However, the scale will be supremely difficult and expensive to achieve. In a world where a company like Tesla can't figure out how to scale self-driving technology with a fraction of the cost and no need for mapping, self-driving technology will not be economically viable in almost all use cases. Given the arc of human technological improvement, this outcome doesn't seem likely. 
Instead, the likeliest outcome is for a company to solve self-driving at a scale previously thought of as quote-unquote impossible due to preconceived limitations, and doing so kind of out of nowhere. For a lot of people that follow this space closely, 2024 is the year that will prove if this statement is correct. Will we finally have self-driving cars that can drive anywhere, or will it always be something that is right there, but completely out of reach? Myself, being an optimist, it's difficult for me to accept that this technology is not solvable today. I personally think that Tesla has the right pieces in place, and in time, this will be proven true. And if not, y'all have a video to use for the rest of the decade to dunk on me anytime you see fit. If you enjoyed this content, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. If you want to see another video like this one, click on the one that's recommended right here about Tesla's strategic masterpiece. Thank you so much for watching.